Welcome to the Shikela Training Center. Today I'll be teaching you guys how to set up a workpiece on a four jaw chuck. Firstly, let's look at the four jaw chuck and what's all so different about it. A three jaw chuck is a self centering chuck, meaning if I have to put my key in the three jaw chuck and turn one of those screws, all three jaws close at the same time, similar to the drilling chuck that you guys use on a drilling machine. A four jaw chuck is also called an independent chuck because if I loosen or tighten the one screw, just one jaw moves. Now we may want to use this as it can hold irregular objects. It could, it also allows for more accuracy in setting up. A three jaw chuck, although it's self-centering, it could have a slight run out or, or wobble. So the four jaw chuck, as I say, if I loosen one screw, one jaw moves. Okay, there are four jaws, that's one, two, three, and four. I want to clamp this workpiece onto that chuck. Now if I look at the OD of the chuck, it's running through. Remember, there's a center line that passes through the spindle, through the tailstock. We want to line up the center line of the workpiece to that center line of the lathe so the job does not run out. Let's just clamp this here. Okay. Loosen some jaws and clamp that there. Now I want you guys to look at how this runs in relation to the OD of the chuck. Do you see that wobbling? We cannot have that because now that's going to provide eccentric machining, which means a part will not, a part that goes into a, a shaft, for example, that goes into a lathe will not be concentric. It'll create vibration. It'll damage bearings, it'll damage the machine. So we need to get that to run through. It's also when we cut it, we want to take off the same amount of material there than we take off there. Not take off too much there and hardly anything or nothing on the opposite side. Let's take this workpiece out. And once again, look at the OD of the chuck. Do you see how that's running through or running concentric? No wobbling, no dancing, anything of that. And look at these rings on the chuck. Aren't those grooves or rings also running concentric or straight? Now what we need to do firstly is line up the corner of each jaw to a common groove or common ring. Let's line it up the top of that groove of the of the of the jaw, the corner of the jaw onto the top of the second groove. Let's move that there. Bring that out, and you can see that corner is too far out from the groove, so we've got to tighten that. Remember, never ever to leave your chuck key in the chuck. Always take it off. Even if your machine is not uh, on or not spinning, always take it out. Next thing, let's measure our workpiece, and we can see our workpiece is 45 millimeters in diameter. We want this workpiece to fit in that gap okay so we, let's take a little ruler and measure that gap that gap is about 40 so how much do we have to open the jaws if I open that jaw 5 millimeter and that jaw nothing I'm still getting a run out so I need to move open the jaws an amount of that diameter minus that gap divide by 2 so if that's 45 and that's 40 the difference is 5 divide that by 2 it's 2.5 I need to open each jaw by 2.5 millimeters. So from 40, let's open that to 42.5. And that, 42.5. If we open this by 2.5, the gap will change from 42.5 to 45. Similar to that. So now I've got a gap of 45 diameters in there and the workpiece should just slot in. Tighten your jaws, not too tight, just a little bit to grab the workpiece. Now, what I like to do is label my jaws so I do not get confused. Let's call this jaw one, two, three, and jaw four. This is rough steel. 
So we cannot use a clock gauge or a DTI on this workpiece here. We'll have to use this instrument here called a surface gauge. Okay, place your surface gauge firmly on the bed of the lathe so it does not rock or move and bring jaw one horizontal to the bed of the lathe. Bring your surface ga gauge as close to the jaws as possible. Use your ruler and position your surface gauge to obtain a reference gap or reference point. I like to set a gap of 10 millimeters. Okay, so I've got a gap of 10 millimeters set up there. Next, we want the gap to be the same all round. The gap between the surface gauge and the workpiece to be the same all round. And if that gap is the same, our workpiece is running concentric. Okay, so we've set up 10 millimeter there. Turn it over to jaw three, because jaw three is opposite jaw one. And here, I've got a gap of eight millimeters. So if I've got a gap of 10 and a gap of eight, I need an equal gap for the workpiece to run through. So the equal gap, the midpoint between eight and 10 is nine. So how do we do that now? I want the gap to get smaller there and bigger here where it was eight. I have to loosen that jaw and shift the workpiece towards jaw one and away from jaw three. So I get a gap of eight, okay? So let's bring jaw one down and loosen it a bit. Turn it over to jaw three, tighten that a bit. Do you see the workpiece moving? Okay, I've got a gap there of nine and nine. It actually needs to be a bit more. So let's loosen that a bit and tighten that a bit. Okay. That looks good to me. And let's check the other side, jaw one. That looks good to me. Okay, so we've got those two jaws set up with an equal gap. That gap of nine millimeter in this example is our magic number. We need to get that same gap between the surface gauge and jaw two, as well as the surface gauge and jaw four. And that's it, our job set concentric. So let's bring jaw two down and measure that gap. Wow, this is almost 10. So remember, that's 10 millimeter. We need the workpiece toward, to move towards me. So we loosen that and tighten that. Let's reset our surface gauge for a gap of 10 millimeter. And check again. Jaw 1 is 10. Jaw 3 is 10. Jaw 2 is about 10.5 so it needs to move a little bit more towards me let's loosen that and tighten jaw four to create a bigger gap there and let's see that so that's 10 10 millimeter 10 millimeter and 10 millimeter and that's it make sure all jaws are tightened enough Nice and tight because you don't want this workpiece to come out while you are machining. And you're good to go. Now you could do your operations such as facing off, center drilling, cutting the OD, whatever your instruction requires you to do. That's all for today's lesson. In the next lesson, I will explain how to set up the workpiece with a clock gauge or a dial test indicator for even more accuracy. Thank you.